Talia the Champs and welcome to the show. So this is the review you have all been waiting for. I tried to get this review out as quick as I can because I know you guys really want it, but I had to do my due diligence and make sure I thoroughly test everything with this Dell XPS 15 9560, the Cabby Lake model, the 2017 XPS 15. Now I will be doing more in-depth reviews, performance reviews, gaming reviews, compared to the MacBook Pro, compared to the old XPS 15. You wanna subscribe if you wanna see those. But this is my full review. So for people that know my channel, it'll be no surprise to you that the Dell XPS 15, the last generation model, was my favorite laptop. Out of all the laptop I could have bought, I chose the Dell XPS 15 because it was the best. And I think it's hard to argue otherwise. And I compared the last XPS 15 to the latest touch bar MacBook Pro and it come out Trump. So seeing that the Dell XPS 15 was the best 15 inch Ultrabook already, how do you improve on the best? It's a hard act to follow and I've nailed it down to six key improvements. First you have the Kaby Lake processor, the latest seventh generation Intel processors that have better battery life, slightly better performance, and there are some other benefits too, I'll get into those later. You have better graphics, the latest generation 10 series graphics from Nvidia. This one has the GTX 1050, a 97 watt hour battery compared to the 84 in the last generation. You have the option of a fingerprint scanner. That model will be available to order sometime in February and it is an option. You have 2400 MHz DDR4 RAM, faster than the 2100 megahertz DDR RAM of the last generation XPS 15. And you also get a super fast SSD. So that's my six key areas where this has improved over the last generation XPS 15. So have those improvements made the best better? Well, let's find out. In every other way, it's pretty much the same. It has the same display, that infinity edge display, which is still best in class. It has that beautiful composite aluminium and carbon fiber build. And someone in the comments called it the Sex PS. And yes, this thing is sexy. It is definitely the F1 of laptops. Now I had the last model over a year and I can vouch for its build quality and robustness. It easily took my workload over a year and I've done most of my videos on that last one. So the aluminium lid here, aluminium on the bottom, you have the vents, you have the feet here. And what you'll notice is these rubber feet, they actually make it sit up a bit. So when you compare it to the MacBook Pro 15 inch, it actually sits a bit higher because of this vent here. You have the service flap and you have the two speakers down here. Open her up and you'll be greeted by that gorgeous 4K Infinity Edge display. You also can get a full HD model. Of course, the webcam is still down there. I don't know where else they're gonna put it. Does the job, it's a 720p webcam. But it's surprising that even though the XPS 13, like three generations ago, was first to come out with the Infinity Edge display, still no one has matched it. I mean, if you look on the Apple, it's taller, it's got a bit of a forehead and the bezels are thicker. This thing looks killer. And you also have this beautiful carbon fiber palm rest there, very soft to touch. And it feels much nicer to type on because of that palm rest there. So basically they fit a 15 inch laptop into a 14 inch size. And I'll just show you something here. Believe it or not, I was a Mac owner. And this was the bag I had for my 13 inch MacBook Pro. And there you have it, it fits inside a 13 inch sleeve. So it starts at $999 US and that gets you an i3, no graphics card and a small battery and a 1080p screen, all the way up to $2,500. This model here is $2,000. I'll get onto the specs later in Australia. They started about $1,899 for the i3 model. We don't have that skew at the moment. And this model here costs three grand in Australia. And pretty much these days with Brexit, you're talking about the same amount of pounds as dollars. So it starts off at four pounds and that's with the small battery all the way up to 4.5 pounds with the large battery, 11 to 17 millimeters thick, so it tapers, and compared to the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Pro is 15 millimeters thick, so this is two millimeters thick at its thickest point, but it's three millimeters smaller at its thinnest point. So basically the size compared to the MacBook Pro, pretty much, the MacBook Pro is not as wide, it's a little bit taller, there's not too much difference between size and weight. So this 
model here and this is my recommended model and check out the links in the description for my recommended model and this has a Kaby Lake i7 Intel 620 graphic 512 gigabyte SSD 16 gigabytes RAM has the GTX 1050 graphics card and the 4k screen it doesn't have the fingerprint scanner that will be coming soon that model now that is my recommended configuration because it gives you all the bells and whistles that this XPS 15 offers but it also gives you room to upgrade in the future you can upgrade the RAM and upgrade the SSD and I will be making videos on how to do that so yeah again subscribe and any test you want me to do on this please let me know down there in the comment and if you think YouTubers should listen to their viewers and yeah make a community out of their comments and try to do tests for their viewers yeah give me a thumbs up there because not all YouTubers do that so it also has the same ports. For this particular moment in time, I think it's bang on with the I.O. So on the left hand side you have the power jack, USB 3, full size HDMI, Thunderbolt 3, USB-C port and the headphone and microphone jack. And on the right hand side you have full size SD card slot where it sticks out about a third of the way. You have another USB 3, you have the battery indicator button and lights and you also have a Kensington lock. So again it has the same display as the last generation XPS. 15 you get the 1080p version or you can get this cracking 4k 100% adobe rgb color gamut display this thing is gorgeous it's fabulous the affinity edge display it's uh, i can't praise this screen enough get that full color gamut so professionals will love it i mean full adobe rgb screens cost a fortune and to have it in a laptop that is considerably cheaper than say the MacBook Pro, it's just unbelievable. And I have made a screen comparison compared to the MacBook Pro, so you might want to check out that review. But this one wins, 350 nits brightness. The Mac does get brighter, that's the only part where the Mac has an advantage over this, And but this gets plenty bright. If you're asking me, should you go 4K or 1080p? Well, if you want the battery life, go to 1080p, but I'm just gonna tell you, get the 4K one, it's just, fabulous keyboard and trackpad oh it's great to use this keyboard i love this keyboard i mean there are better keyboards like say lenovo make better keyboards but this is right up there it's fabulous to use you won't get tired using it it's got a good amount of travel much better than the macbook pro's keyboard and i think you'll like it trackpad too it's a great trackpad the best windows trackpad for sure that's 100 percent it is as good as the macbook pro's trackpad no nothing is as good as the macbook pro's trackpad but this is great gestures work well has a nice click and it's nice and smooth so you'll love the trackpad the sound is really good it's loud actually i think they've improved them with firmware over time you can actually listen to it at full volume now without distortion they're, these ones are really good uh, they're not as good as the macbook pro sound but they are good let's have a listen and by the way this is amd tech one word that is amd tech this is tony soprano fabulous reviewer check out his channel this guy is the king so check his channel out hi my name's andrew and this is the review of the huawei mate 9 smartphone let's find out if it's worth your money as of late one thing is very clear huawei's been stepping up its game so I guess you guys want to know about performance. Now, as I said, I will be doing a more comprehensive performance test and gaming test and comparing it to other computers, MacBook Pro and the old XPS 15, but just to sum up performance here. First of all, super fast SSD. It's a Samsung PM961. We're talking 3,177 megabytes per second read and 1,642 megabytes write. Now, originally I would say, you know, get the smallest SSD and upgrade or whatever. You don't have to upgrade this. Just get the biggest one they'll offer because really you're not going to get much faster than this. And the reality is unless you have some sort of Thunderbolt device that has an array of SSDs, there's no way you'll be able to write to this to its maximum speed potentials there. So cracking SSD. Now Kaby Lake versus Sky Lake. Well, clock for clock, there is no real difference. But what you need to know is Kaby Lake can be between 12 and 25% more efficient not in raw cpu power but just if you open hundreds of documents a day because it idles faster and it has a faster speed shift and it can sustain higher frequencies for longer and it's also clocked faster 
That all equals to microseconds, but over a few hundred documents, emails, web tabs, and stuff like that. It all adds up if you've replicated the exact same workday on a Skylake processor. So clock for clock, not much performance difference, but yeah, you have those efficiencies. It also can play 4K H.265 content with only 10% CPU usage, whereas Skylake uses 40. So you're gonna get better battery life, and also Kaby Lake is much more battery efficient. So something like Cinebench, I was able to get 747 and that was 10% faster than the last XPS 15 and around 8% faster than the 2.7 gigahertz MacBook Pro. So as I said, raw speed, clock for clock, there's not much difference. But if you look at Geekbench, I was able to get 4,552 single thread and that was 6% faster than the XPS 15 and 24% faster than the 2.7 gigahertz MacBook Pro. Really, Geekbench, I, it's not a benchmark I really trust that much. I got 74,939 on the OpenCL test and that was like fast faster than the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro. So I know this graphics card is faster. The main benefits of Kaby Lake are the better battery life, cooler, and that 12 to 25% extra efficiency in day-to-day -day tasks. Now to sum up GPU performance, you're looking at anywhere between 20 and 35% difference i don't trust that geekbench where it says it's over 50 percent faster i don't trust that one but yeah 20 to 35 percent faster than the 960 in the last xps 15 so with unigen heaven that is 20 percent faster than the 960 i was able to play civ 6 at like 50 frames per second 4k whereas on the macbook pro i could not play it at 1050p at 20 frames per second so it absolutely kills the macbook pro there and that's an amd optimized game i don't know what's going on there but that's a massive difference i'm not going to throw the battlefield benchmark in because fraps was playing up with battlefield for some reason i will do that in my gaming review and if you look at my twitter i've released a lot of benchmarks anyway but but just to sum up quickly the graphics performance gta 5 high to very high settings 1080p 75 frames per second wow that's that's really good. CSGO, you're getting 140 frames per second, 1080p with the settings max. And Crisis 3, this one surprised me. Crisis 3, 1080p, high settings, 86 frames per second. So this thing can game. And as I said, it's a 20 to 35% increase over the 960. A big performance jump there. That's a fair bit. And I am a bit disappointed. It's not a 1050 Ti in there. I don't know why it's not. It's still good. Latest titles, high settings, 1080p. This has got you covered. And make sure you stay tuned for the more comprehensive gaming review. So temperatures when I was gaming, around 74, something like that for the GPU, around 65, 67 on the CPU. It run cooler than the Mac under load. So it has thermal control better than the Mac. And compared to the last model, I didn't notice it was any hotter. It, it does get loud when you game or push it, of course. Every laptop does. But it's no louder or worse than any other laptop. And But the thermals are well controlled there. So that's a good thing. So this thing can game. And of course, it can video edit. And because this has a 4 gigabyte GTX 1050, it does video edit better. Because pretty much the rule of thumb is how much K your footage is is how much RAM you need. You need one gig RAM for 1080p, for 2K, you need two gigs RAM, 4K, you need four gigs RAM. That's video RAM. Now rendering, compared to the last model, maybe a 10% difference. There wasn't that much, to be honest. But actual playback and just working in Premiere, it was faster. You, you can notice it. Not that the old one was bad. It was still great. Pretty much all my videos were done with that. But this one is better. Now battery life, this has a 97 watt hour battery versus 84 watt hour battery of the last model, along with Kaby Lake. And I'm happy to say that, yeah, you're going to get over seven hours battery life. Your mileage may vary, of course. Everybody uses their computer different that's web surfing watching video youtube email nothing heavy duty but yeah i was getting over seven and a half hours i got eight hours on my fourth run so with that bigger battery in cabby lake you're going to get yourself minimum hour and a half extra battery life over the last model xps 15 so depending on usage you're looking at seven and a half eight hours there Compare that to the MacBook Pro 15 inch. Yeah, so this thing actually has better battery life. I was going about seven hours with the MacBook Pro 15 inch. This one here, I at least get half an hour more, maybe a bit more. So battery life is really good for a 4K screen. I'm very happy with it. So have Dell done it? Have they made the best better? Well, they certainly have this thing here. 
gets my recommendation tally ho top draw no problems there best in class they've made the best better and if you're after a 15 inch powerhouse ultra book that you can throw anything at this thing will handle it with a plomb very highly recommended and when you're comparing that this spec model here is 2000 for a similar spec macbook pro you're looking at 3100 us versus 2000 it's just a no-brainer it's a better laptop I've got lots more reviews on this coming up, so make sure you subscribe to see all those. Give me a thumbs up there, that'll help me out. And until next time, guys, tally ho.